Toby, uh, just get your thoughts then uh, post-match, uh, a few minutes after the end of the game. Uh, best team won. Yeah. Best team won and I wish Munster all the best for the semi-final. Um, it was a difficult contest, I think we made it uncomfortable for them, but probably not difficult enough. Uh, and what I mean by that is we had a few key moments that we probably needed to capitalise yeah. on. And when you are away from home against the quality of opposition, you need to, you know, to take those opportunities. So it wasn't for a lack of trying. And you know, sometimes it's your decision. Sometimes it's out of your hands. But in addition to that, I have a sense of pride of of this team because despite all of the things in 51 weeks in you know we gave ourselves a shot yeah. and that we should be proud of that and that's gives us the confidence and the belief that we can get there and secondly the disappointment will fuel us to want to keep going do you think the difference maybe between the two teams is when they had some opportunities they came away with points i.e tries yeah. or penalties well, look. I mean, they, they score a lot of tries, and they, they you know, to limit them to two two tries to one, yeah. and the fact they're kicking goals is a, is a sign of respect, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that they paid his respect. I spoke to Graham Rantry before the game. He was very respectful to to us and to and to me around what we've done, and also he was similar when we was when he was at you know at the dot com. So, from that point of view. Um, yeah, we just couldn't squeeze enough scoreboard pressure to make life a little bit more nervy for them. And you know, all of a sudden, you know, we like those sort of situations because yeah. we compete. I thought we defended very well. We couldn't maintain any field position second half. Yeah. We huffed and we puffed, and then, you know, we, we lost a couple of key, key elements there. And then, you know, we probably get penalised discipline-wise, rightly or wrongly, for probably being competitive and wanting to compete. But you know, there's a lot of young players there that are learning how to win yeah. as well. So, you know, was there a phase just before half time where you seem to have a lot of possession towards the try line, three, four chances, and you couldn't yeah. quite sort of make anything of them? Yeah, that's a key moment, right? Yeah. And you know, you t you come in. I don't know what the score was then. Um, seven, to, I think it was seventeen seven. Yeah. You know, even if you take three there, seventeen ten. It changes you know, the game a bit. Well, doesn't it? well it just changes the half-time talk from from their perspective, and yeah, then you it comes about a forty-minute yeah. game and bits and pieces. But you know, I mean, our try was wonderful, right? It was it was all that we were about. Um, if you look at the the makeup of our team, we've carried quite a lot of injuries into the game, you know, and to a man that you know that they did their ultimate very best. I'm proud of the effort. I'm proud of. You know, it feels completely different to the Gloucester game, for example, which yeah. I thought we were probably a little bit disappointed that we didn't fire a shot, as you know, we didn't yeah. show the best of ourselves. But from an effort point of view, from an ambition point of view, we showed that today. But we just still didn't weren't clinical enough, yeah. probably, to make it more difficult for them. And in the second half, it, it felt as if you could not get a foot into the yeah. game in yeah. terms of. You know, being in the half to to sort of threaten them. Yeah, and, and that, that's what looks very different from you know, from the coach point to the spectators and people watching it. You see, you get into their half, they win an aerial battle, they win the scrap. Yeah. Then there's a scrum penalty, you know, and then all of a sudden you've now got to build an innings from yeah. 15 meters yeah. off your own try line, yeah. and that's very difficult against very good teams. That being said, you know there was a lot of quality in what we do defensively yeah. we were very good scrum was we were good I thought you know on a different day we might have got a little bit more there um, and you know that was a key moments but ultimately you know we've given ourselves a shot and, yeah. and if you just said to that at the start you know when, when when the dust settles we'll be pleased the fact that we've you know moved forward yeah it'll be continually be challenging with decreasing budgets but the disappointment of what we've had there like the disappointment in the Gloucester game means that gives us the appetite and the fuel to want to keep going and you showed by scoring that try that you could almost create something from nothing because yeah. it was just like you kind of stunned yeah for it. sure you know and you know that's the the sort of 
rugby we like to, you know, we're trying to play along with decent set piece and you know there were some really good performances out. I thought Morgan Morris, everyone talks about him, you know, from a, an attacking point of thought defensively he was very, very good today, you know, collision wise and, and so I was really pleased I thought Kieran Williams was very, very good as as well, you know, in some of the things that they do. So um, probably the only disappointment of the day is means it's the end of Nicky Smith and yeah. you know, we spoke about that in the change room. That was a very uh, emotional moment for the group. Um, because this is a tight group and we said to see him go. How would you assess then, obviously this is the, the end of a, 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 the season tonight, how would you look back at the season then if you're sort of uh, doing an end of term uh, sort of report? Well you've, you've put me on the spot there haven't you with about <laughs> four, four minutes notice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look I think that you often look about what you, I mean I said it in the week about what you set out to do you know, and then you have stretch targets, right? So we said that we'd win the World Shield, we did that. We said that we'd get to the knockouts in Europe, we did that. We said we'd try we'd try and get to the playoffs and we did that. So from that point of view, maybe we should set our ambition a little bit higher. But we are a team now that has to learn and still maintain, you know, the standards that's got us to be a top eight team. Because we want to be a top eight team again. And then from being a top eight team, you become a top four team. So there's there's always a, a you know, you always want more. You, yeah. As coaches, as players, you're always in search of the perfect game that you never get. But that's what keeps us coming back. In terms of getting into the, the play of situation, you know, you you reference you almost every week about the constraints, the budgets, etc. Do you sometimes think, you know, if my hands weren't tied in any way, what you couldn't achieve? You said that, not me. I don't mention it every week. I mentioned the fact Most that we weeks. find a way. I mentioned the fact we find a way. Yeah. But we have to see the positive and the opportunity yeah. in it, you know. And we can't use that as an excuse because it is what it is. I'm just. I'm sure that people that, you know, and we speak on a weekly basis. You know all about that, and you know what success looks like within that regards. And I think that we've we've given, you know, some positivity. I think in in Welsh Rugby, which I think is probably the most important thing, you know, irrespective of the, having something positive to talk about, uh, which is good, and long might that continue, um, you won't find a coach in the world that doesn't want more players, <laughs> or better players, or, but well, what I really want is Osprey's players, I want people that represent this region in the way it should be represented, like Nicky Smith, for yeah. example, and Justin Tipperick as two, Adam Beard. For example, people that understand what it's like to be an Osprey, and if they happen to be very talented as well, that'd yeah. be fantastic. But that's what the standard, and that's the that's the identity of, of a player, and that the good, exciting thing. If I, you know, to give us some excitement and hope, if you like, yeah. is those youngsters that you see are now coming mainstays of the team, and the new lot that are coming through, so your Dan Edwardses and, and Morgan Morses and people like that, are. You know, they they all represent that and, and display that. So, I think that you know that's the big success story. I've read a few things online to say that, that people get the impression that um, players would run through brick walls from your coaching style, what you've <laughs> instilled in this group. You know, what, what have you done in terms of to give that sort of impression to people? You better ask them. Uh, I think that look, it's not about me. It's around the coaching group and the and the conditioners. It's all about a very much a unity and a, and a group thing. And sometimes, as leaders, you just have to get out of their way, you know. But what well, we're we're very strong on trying to have the right attitude and the right effort based stuff. And we're definitely seeing them to be the players become more taking more ownership of the standards of performance of a top eight team. As I said, it sounds obtuse, especially sitting there having lost, is, you know, the standard is the standard. And the more times we meet it, the more chance we've got to win it. So it's about going through the standards and the processes that require you to get there. And we've been very transparent in that. And we've involved the players in dictating that and being the gatekeepers of that. So. I'm sort of like the custodian of it, and ultimately, I, you know, I, I try and keep a, a, a 
a group that wants to do that and wants to go through with that. And that changes over time. People get old, people, you know, people change. But the, the challenge is, is to get like-minded people that want to work hard for the group, put themselves, put the team first. Uh, and that can be a very special thing in tight moments. What does a head coach do now in the summer when the, the season comes to an end? Bit of R and R, or is it still rugby on the brain, twenty four seven? No, I think. I mean, I think this this season's been exceptionally long because yeah. of the World Cup and whatever, and that means the next one's exceptionally short, as in preparation yeah. time. So I think that's the first challenge to get ready for that. I think it's also important to have a mental break after be going for so long for everybody. Um, so we've already planned out, we know what's coming, we know how it's going to go. Uh, yeah, it will It will take me about three days before I start again. <laughs> no, but, uh, but on a serious note, that's, that's part of it. Um, and uh, in a short pre-season, we've got to be really, try and be really clinical on what we're going to improve and what we're going to alter and little manipulations we're going to make because we haven't got much time, so we've got to choose wisely in order yeah. to, to improve again. Um, because that's what we need to do. And does the bar creep up in terms of expectation? You know, you, you've got through mm. into no, a playoff. Do you want to go even? It's a, it's a good easier? question. I think, well, you know, you always want to go, don't yeah. you? But I, as I've said, I want to be comparing us with the top eight. You know, and we're a part of that now. Yeah. yeah. Or this, you know, currently, and we might not be next year, and that will be the same. We will go through the same process, but we want to compare ourselves to the top eight and not be the best of the rest. And that—that's the attitude that's going to get us closer. Doesn't mean you're going to get there, but that's our attitude. So that—that's what we have to do. And you know, we're excited about some of the people coming in. Got a little bit more to do, and try and get a little bit. A freshness in as well because that's important um, but you know hopefully if the injury gods are a little bit so we can maintain you know more competition for places and that drives the players and, and, and the competition in-house further so there's a lot there's a lot to do there's a lot to be excited about and you know we're not going to hold the backdrop of where we've come and compared as, a, as an excuse but we have to as you said you talked about expectation it's not about necessarily just about expectations, it's about the standard and the expectations we have on ourselves. And that's the biggest pressure. So you need a bit of luck, you need some injuries, you need things to fall your way, you need to fix the list and be right at the right time. There's so much of it is out of your control. As I said, if we get our standards right, if we get our effort right, we get our collective right, we get our unity right, we get our clarity right, Give us a good shot. And a final question: With this sort of new league coming in and uh, the regional setup, is it a case of a new chapter, maybe just to see if things improve? You know, the quality of players coming to your level. You know, is that quite exciting to look yeah, forward to? I think I think change is always exciting. I think that to have, you know, I'm quite excited to meet with, you know, the coaches of those of those teams because, you know. They give a fresh pair of eyes yeah. and a bit of perspective. Similarly, I'll be going out and having a look at what other people do in different sports, probably rugby league in particular. You know, doing a few little bits and pieces just to you know, look for those one percenters. And if someone gives you one gem and you, yeah. can, you can act on it, they're great. But I want to try and I want to try and make you know it more of a family partner club partnership from top to bottom. And if we can support those three clubs that we that are part of our area then that would be great because their standard will go up and the the want to play rugby will go up and we'll get more people playing and more people interested in rugby and hopefully more people supporting the Ospreys and supporting Wales and you're getting momentum in the right direction because you know it's hit the buffers and gone backwards got a fair rate or not so we need to try and turn that around in what in whatever capacity we can.